Now, let's look at how we can build different models using space claim. There are different ways to create solid models. Some are more effective than others. The typical traditional approach will be to learn the different products features one by one, from the most common to the more and more complex or specialized ones. One could start by learning how to select the bodies and draw simple shapes, like rectangles and circles. Then learn the three-dimensional features like pulling to extrude and shape bodies, or blend to automatically create a connection between different shapes and forms, and even combine and merge different 3D objects. Then one can move into learning all the more advanced features, like all of them. Once done, you can build this, right? <laughs> Probably not. Most likely you will spend endless hours trying to build that. Using the three or four features, you can still remember how to use. After studying all of them, one after another. This approach indeed will be time consuming and lead to a lot of wasted effort. Solid modeling is actually like planning a trip. For example, we can plan a trip to the North Pole. We will do research set the travel dates, book the flights, and decide where to stay and what to eat. Those are already important steps. Then, in order to travel along those lands covered in snow, we definitely cannot think about renting a convertible and driving around in that. It will be kinda cold. You may not find a gas station very easily, or you can even get stuck in the snow. A better plan would be to adapt to the local conditions. What about a dog sled? This will be a much better option to travel around and get a full experience in the north. Look at that! <laughs> Isn't that nice? With proper planning, everything definitely goes much smoother than you would by landing into a random location and trying to figure the entire trip out from there. Modeling works in the same way. The best approach to creating the model is to think before jumping into building it. This is what we like to call logical modeling. The first step is to look at the model and come up with a plan. You want to divide and conquer the model, decomposing it into multiple components with different levels of complexity. Let's look again at our transmission model. We have gear wheels, shafts, bolts, nuts and other parts. Just looking at the model, you can already see that some parts are simpler than others, since they have less details. The first step in the process is to look at the model to identify the similarities and repetitions. For example, the two black metal bars on the top look pretty similar to each other. Or the bolt holes for the casing component. They all have the same size and look like they are repetitions of the same instance with different orientations and minor modifications. Then decide for each component whether to build it from scratch or use primitives like spheres or cylinders. For example, the gear wheels, this can all be generated starting from a cylinder and then cut the teeth out of the basic shape. When planning what approach to use to create different parts of the models, we need to think about what feature to use. This 
helps us understand and remember the scope of each feature. For example, to create the teeth of the gear wheels, we can generate the profile of one tooth and use it as a cutting tool with a pull operation to remove the excess material from the cylinder. Since all the teeth of the gear are the same, we can use a copy of the first tooth to create all the other ones. This brings us to the next step of the plan. Think about how to reduce the number of tasks required to build the model. All the repetitions and similarities we identified before can be our starting point to reduce the tasks. For example, we can create one mounting hole for the casing and then copy it multiple times, moving and rotating the copies to place them in the correct position. Some of them will be modified afterwards to cut out some of the material. Or we can create one of the two metal bars and use it as starting point to create the second one. Each of the model components can be created separately for convenience and when all are ready they can be imported and then assembled together to complete the final model. In this course you will learn how to use space claim to create different models. Each model will be analyzed and a strategy to build its components will be presented. You will go through models with increasing complexity from a simple heatsink up to an assembly of a robotic arm to learn different features of space claim and improve your skills. At the end of the course, you will put what you've learned to test with the final modeling challenge. So let's get ready to start modeling.